understand what it's like being shot and what it's done to me and my family. There was a day when I walked the halls of this Senate and worked closely with many of you and your staffs. There was a wonderful day when I was fortunate enough to serve the President of the United States in a capacity I had dreamed of all my life. And for a time, I felt that people looked up at me. Today, I can tell you how hard it is to have people speaking down to me. It's not easy to tell you this because I don't want your sympathy or your pity. But I tell you because you can do something not to help me, but to prevent this from happening to others. An untold number of people are alive today who otherwise wouldn't be, thanks to Jim and his courageous wife, Sarah. Their leadership, their vision, their determination uh, is a model uh, to everyone else. I think Jim and Sarah Brady are the very best example of what it is to be courageous. It was all the things everybody said, but to me, Jim Brady was simply heroic. You know, it was really more than anything, Jim and Sarah and what they achieved uh, that inspired me to devote the rest of my life to, uh, to this issue. You live within me now Your words will guide me now We won't let you leave We won't let you go Jim was the press secretary for about 10 weeks. Brady emerged as a tremendous asset for Ronald Reagan. When he was recommended for that position, uh, I didn't have to think twice. Too. We sat in the same chair at the same desk doing the same job, and I thought, you know, that that's the definition of a hero, someone who you can relate to who does something you think that you'd never be able to do. We came home and I turned on the television and then the phone rang and it was my friend Jan Wolf and she said, oh Sarah, uh, you heard. And I said, heard what? When Jim was pronounced dead, and of course he wasn't dead, he was still in the operating room, the hospital decided she needed to know and Sarah laughed and said, well they really do need a press secretary over there at the White House, don't they? Which, I mean, that shows her incredible way of handling things, you know. I think people were just, were struck by the, by the courage, the fortitude, physically, in his case, and emotionally, physically, in Sarah's case. It's hard to imagine how any of us would react if placed in his circumstances. A cripple for the rest of your life, unable to move except with great difficulty and with some pain, deprived of almost all of the things that make life worth living. He put on the best face. They both did, all the time. But in private, of course, he would let down. He would, he would, he would weep a little. Sarah and her husband, James Brady, have been leading a national fight for handgun control. Now it's called Handgun Control Incorporated. I believe that people should have the right to own or purchase guns, but I do believe we are a responsible society. But then I later found out, um, or actually as I talked to Sarah, uh, she became involved in the movement in 1986. And the reason she did is because her son, Scott. Some friends came to pick Scott and me up and take us swimming, and Scott and I jumped into the pickup truck. And as we did, Scott picked up a gun off the, front, off the seat. And as I took that gun from Scott, the cold reality hit me that it was a fully loaded 22 that my child had picked up. And how close again we came to another tragedy. That gun changed Sarah Brady from housewife to lobbyist. There was a piece on 60 Minutes uh, that uh, I remember seeing. I haven't seen it since, but my recollection was 
and it may not even be true, was of Sarah walking through the halls of Congress, Congress. calling Congress people cowards. Sarah Brady. You'd know when they voted your way, and then the ones that, and they'd feel guilty. They yeah. that had their tail between their legs, and you'd see them. They'd avoid us off. like the plague. I hope you'll still consider my our amendment. Press Secretary Jim Brady and his wife Sarah used all the emotional ammunition in their arsenal. We were constantly out lobbying and talking and a dog and pony show jim and i do a lot of what he calls dog and pony shows around the country speaking and he always pony me. dog <laughs> i support the brady bill and i urge the congress to enact it it went through three presidents it went through seven years before it actually became law what we are witnessing today is more than a bill signing, is the end of unchecked madness and the commencement of a heartfelt crusade for a safer and saner country. This was a, a major victory against strong odds that was led uh, mightily so by Sarah and Jim Brady. Thanks really more to Jim and Sarah Brady than to any actions of mine or other members of the Congress because they provided not just the substance but the emotional impetus to get people interested and involved in this issue. As Sarah goes on to post Everlasting, I hope that she will see that we are continuing with that crusade. Without Sarah and Jim Brady, it just simply would not have happened. They were the inspiration, they had the vision, uh, they had a plan, and we were their loyal followers. There's a plaque that hangs in the James S. Brady press briefing room in the White House. It reads, may his courage and dedication continue to inspire all who work in this room and beyond. In that spirit, let's keep working together for the change we know is possible. Maybe what I'd like to say to you guys the most is that uh, it, this can be done. Uh, it is hard work, but you just have to, have to be like my husband was. You have to persevere and you have to uh, be patient and you have to keep the pressure on and keep working at it. Uh, but it can be done. It can be done and please don't give up hope. Uh, you all can finish the job. So endless the love that you gave And endless the road we will take To not let you leave To not let you go To not let you leave not let you go to not let you leave to not let you